The workshops offered today will provide you with various ways to save time and effort by using technology, event planning, streamlining processes, documenting procedures, having more effective meetings, and improving our work partnerships. We start the workshop series with a great keynote speaker who will share ways we can provide leadership regardless of our position or role. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge our partners. As you know, it takes many people to make an event like this a success. From training and organization development, Terry Werner and Jill Wynett Wardell. The Staff Development Committee, Monique Armstrong, Terry Ellsworth, Steve Bowers, Arthur Brown, Mike D'Archangelo, Andrea DeSantis, Teresa Lupinet, Joe Regeer, Carrie Salter, and Dreamer Wentz. <laughs> Additional people working to make today's program a success, Shobna Aurora, Pat Jarkowski, Patrick Merriman, all from Human Resources, and Shannon Booker from the Commons. <laughs> a special thank you to the Commons Operations Staff, Common Vision Print and Copy Center, and Glenmore Catering. <laughs> Before I introduce our keynote speaker for today, we'll hear from our president, Dr. Freeman Rabowski. I'm reading the quote there, Joe, on this professional development uh, statement. It says, since we can't change reality, uh, see if we can't change our eyes and the way we view reality. So let me tell you my reality this morning. Sometimes the best way you can be a leader is just to be truthful. Um, last night I took some medicine <laughs> because I've got this pain right now in my back because I got too excited with my P90X one day. And so I took some medicine to help out that the doctor gave me. And um, the medicine was supposed to stop the pain and put me to sleep, let me get a good night's rest. Well, I was up all night because the pain didn't leave. The medicine didn't stop the pain. I didn't go to sleep. This morning, I got ready to get up, and I started to put the cover over my head because I was feeling sleepy, right? So I'm looking at you now, and I cannot see you. I want you to know that, all right? <laughs> Number one, uh, somebody's got to drive me to D.C. for a press release where the cameras are going to be on me like this. And what's interesting about it is the pain is still here. All right? But, but, I thought to myself, isn't it great to be alive? Yeah. Isn't it great to have pain? I mean, if, if you think about it, if you, th you know, you have a choice. You could be paralyzed. You could be numb, right? This is about growth and development. I mean, I was driving here and seeing the rain and about to get negative and say, oh my God, the traffic and blah, blah, blah. And then I thought, you know, this is going to make it greener, right? We need the rain. You see what I'm saying? And so my point to you is I have to work, every person has to work on him or herself because we all have problems of all types. And if I went around campus all day telling everybody, oh, I feel sick, people would probably say, Freeman, shut up, suck it up. Just deal with it, all right? My wife says I'm a wimp anyway. <laughs> she, says, she says, you don't know what pain is. Right? <laughs> so the fact is, your attitude makes all the difference in the world. This today is so special because, as Val said, it gives you a chance to think about how you use the resources that you have, how you perform your responsibilities, how you relate to other people, and most important, what you think of yourself. I do want each of you to think of yourselves as a leader. Regardless of your job title, you are a leader. And leaders understand that people are watching all the time. We had a consultant here years ago, Joe, who said, you can never not lead. He was working with a group, remember, people remember the name President Hooker, Michael Hooker? We were all, how many of you here when Michael Hooker was here? It's amazing, a few. Well, he was, my he was my boss, and we were having this consultant in, and we were talking about how to make us work more effectively together. And amazingly, uh, this guy said that, and everybody's saying, what's he talking about? You can never not lead. Well, I'm a mathematician, so a minus times a minus, remember algebra, is a positive. When he said you can never not lead, what he's saying is you're leading all the time. When you least expect it, 
the way you perform, the way you act, the way you talk, even your body language lets people know if you're into it or if you're disgusted or if you're discouraged or whatever. And so the idea for you is this, that as you go through this session throughout the day, I would hope you would be working to be as creative as possible. The word of the day for me is neotony. It's a word I want you to remember, neotony, N-E-O-T-E-N-Y. I use it a lot. It comes from a book entitled Geeks and Geezers. And the meaning of it is you're forever young. You're always looking for the next thing to do. You're always positive. Other people come around being negative. You say, but wait a minute, have you looked at it this way? And all of a sudden, you find yourself being, Terry's like that. She's got that positive smile on her face. She's got that neotony, right? I mean, the idea is, and you even look younger because you act younger because you're always, you don't get, the worst thing you can hear people saying is, been there, done that. When people get that way, they become cynical. And then that, that's why it's good to have all kinds of new blood in because they can say, well, what if? Why don't we try it? And so I want you to think about that quality today. Think of yourselves as younger than you've ever been, ready to discover the new things and to enjoy what our keynote speaker will say. I have given Valerie instructions. I want her to take every note from our keynote speaker's time with effective meetings. I want to work on that one for everybody, all right? Have a great day and hope that I can feel better. I'm feeling better already. I really am. It feels good. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It is my pleasure to introduce our speaker for this morning, Joe Rea. Joe Rea is the founder and president of Glimmerglass Consulting and Training Incorporated, a Maryland-based management and organization development consulting firm. In his 20 years as a consultant, Joe has consulted with many profit and nonprofit organizations and universities. Joe's corporate experience includes over 10 years in broadcasting industry, including roles as Director of Organization and Management Development with the National Broadcasting Company in New York and Director of Human Resources for WJLA-TV in Washington, D.C. A highly regarded trainer, facilitator, and consultant Joe has spoken at several national and regional conferences. He is the author of the book, Leading in Times of Significant Change and Uncertainty, Straight Talk from Senior Leaders. This book provides advice on how to improve your effectiveness in leading yourself and others, regardless of your role. Please give a warm welcome to our keynote speaker, Joe Rea. One of them likes to feel younger an awful lot. And I tell them, you don't have to scream. You don't have to feel younger. You are young. Um, I want to welcome you. And I want to thank you, because I know um, the weather has been crazy out there. Uh, we didn't think we had too many worries about rain, uh, weather contingencies today. Uh, it was not December when we might have some. Uh, but this is probably the largest amount of rainfall we're getting. Uh, roads are crazy out there. so. Um, I do an awful lot of work in the utility industry also, energy industry and Constellation Energy and BGE is one of the clients I work with and I will tell you one thing they always, always talk about and I just want to put this out there for everyone. They start every one of their meetings at BGE, Baltimore, Baltimore Gas and Electric, you talk about leadership, they have a value around safety. Every single meeting they have, they spend at least a minute or two talking about a safety message and I have truly learned from them. So I will just share the safety message I'm sure they're sharing with everyone. Please be very careful out there, okay, because the roads are not good. You've all gotten in here and they're going to continue like that. And we all know sometimes there are some people who are not focusing on that. So um, let us all have the opportunity to feel neotony 
over and over and over by being safe. Is that a fair way to start this off? Yes. All right. Um, I welcome everyone. Again, my name is Joe Ray. I head up a group called Glimmer Glass Consulting and Training. Um, and you heard a little bit of the background. So given the limited amount of time, rather than me sharing a lot of background, I do want to just say, Valerie, thank you to you. Terry, thank you to you. I don't know where Jill is. Where is Jill? Jill is getting ready for her session coming up. And the entire committee who invited me in here, I've been here at UMBC several times in the past. Um, but being part of this professional day is just an absolute honor because this is not an everyday occurrence. This is a very special occasion. I commend all of you for taking the time to invest in yourself. I will also, as we're going through, if I could invite, I know, uh, Cheryl, is it? You're sitting there all on your own. Sir, you're sitting there all on your own. We're going to do a little bit of discussion during this. This will not be just me speaking to everyone. So if you would like, rather than having to talk to yourself, feel free, find someone that you, that you know, you like, you don't like, you don't know, whichever way, and this way you'll be able to have a little conversation there. Um, what I would ask is this. The topic that we're talking about this morning, and in fact throughout the whole day, relates exactly what it says up there. It's about leading yourself regardless of what type of role you're in. I love Dr. Rabowski's comment about everyone being a leader, regardless of what role. I remember hearing that at a National Honor Society meeting when I was back in high school. Someone got up and they said something along the line of, you know what, you're going to hear a lot of people talk about how you're leaders and you may be looking around and you're saying, I don't know if I really, I don't, I'm not the president of a club here, I'm not the president of this or you know, the captain of the sports teams or anything. And this individual went on to say, but you know what, you have influence on people. How many of you in this room have influence on someone in your life? All, right, all of us, one way or the other, direct or indirect. And that goes right to the sense of we are all leaders in one way, shape, or form. It also says leading yourself, leading others. Do you have to be in a formal supervisory role to lead other people? No. How many of you have worked on project teams? All right? You might have been an informal or a formal leader even though you were not in the supervisor role, okay? The other thing that it says up there, in times of significant change. Now, I don't want to spend most of the time here talking about what change you have, but are you going through any sort of changes here at UMBC? Is there any change in the environment? None whatsoever, right? Yell them out. I don't need microphones for this, but what are some of the changes that have been happening? And I want to be clear, change does not simply mean negative change. Are there positive changes? So what are some of the things that are going on over the last half year, year, two years? What are some changes around this institution? I'm sorry? Lots of construction going on, right? New buildings, roads, and all that. What else? I'm sorry? Parking changes. You're not smiling when you're saying that. <laughs> OK. What, <laughs> what else? Other changes? I'm sorry? Salary changes, OK? All right, in what ways? Up, down, flattening? Yeah, my, my son works in the state and he is also dealing with things that you are dealing with, furloughs, right? And it's, it's a struggling time. What are some of the positive changes that you've seen also? Construction could be both a positive and a negative, right? It's growth, but it's, it's interfering to our day to day. What are some of the other positive changes you see going on? Yes. Okay, you might not have heard this. This is the lemonade and lemon thing. The comment that Kathy made was, a few more days off given the furloughs, okay? Now, if we could figure out how to get the more days off with pay, that would be pretty cool, huh? But in the meantime, I tell you, every once in a while, you say, all right, you know what? I'm not happy about it, but let me figure out, if I'm going to be staying home, let me figure out what I could do. So I'm going to catch up on this, I'll do this, or whatever. Any other changes? What are some of the changes around the overall institu institution? Is this, org is this institution growing? Is it getting recognized more and more? Yes. Okay. Does that put more attention to your institution? Okay. So we could do this. If this was a two-hour session, we could be going on and on and on. Is everyone dealing with change in your professional life? How many of you are dealing with changes in your personal life? Right? Marriages, divorces, births, deaths, um, you know, graduations, uh, moving to new places. Right? All that stuff goes on and on and on. What I'd like you to do, 
at your tables, which is why I asked, and again, if anybody's sitting on your own, if you could just join in with one of the other tables, say hello, and can you for the next two minutes, and then we'll start handing out some handouts around what we have here. No need to literally be writing a lot of stuff down, but can you have a brief conversation? In times of change, what could you do, regardless of what your role is, what could you do to be more effective in leading yourself and leading others in these times of change? Okay? Just want to hear a couple of suggestions before I start spouting out some things. You talk, say hello to your colleagues at your table, and come up with two or three ideas. What could you do to be more effective in leading yourself and leading others in times of significant change? Go ahead. This is now the interactive part. Okay? All right. Everyone get a few ideas? Okay, I know, Patrick, you have a mic somewhere, but I'm just going to really try to um, keep this going. Any of the tables, one or two ideas that you have. Who has Patrick, right over there. Uh, be positive with the change. Mm-hmm, okay. How many people had anything along being positive, optimistic, right? Look for the extra day off rather than the loss of pay, right? <laughs> did, that, did we have a role model for that, okay? Who else? Who else? Other folks. Yes, sure. Uh, to be proactive instead of reactive. Proactive instead of reactive. Patrick, we're going to have you running up and down, right? That's all right. Proactive as opposed to reactive. So think about what is changing, what are some of the things we could do, um, you know, the thing of how do we control some of the things, how do we influence them as opposed to letting them happen to us. Other folks on the, around the room, other suggestions. I've got the back table. And I haven't seen Terry keep an eye out for anyone over on this side. Terry has a mic back there too for you. Okay. Sorry. Officer. Being a good listener. Being a good listener. And Patrick, stay back there just for a second. Why is being a good listener something that makes you more effective as a leader? Because it's always good to hear other ideas from other people. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm going to give you some quirks for the day. Uh, Wizard of Oz. How many people remember that movie, right? You know, we're off to see the Wizard. You know, great, this is on video. I'm singing, we're off to see the wizard here. Um, there's a great line around listening and talking and communicating in The Wizard of Oz. Remember when Dorothy meets the scarecrow? And they meet, and the scarecrow hears, she's going off to Oz, she's going to see the wizard, she's going to get back home. And he says, oh, can I go with you? He said, because I'd like to get a brain. And she looks at him, she says, what do you mean, scarecrow? You, you already have a brain, you've been talking with me. And this line, it goes right to your point around listening. He says, oh, no. I know quite a few people who do an awful lot of talking with very little brains. <laughs> <laughs> and I think one of the things we've fallen into the trap at times is thinking that leadership is talking to. Leadership is much, much more listening. OK? All right, so now you know my, my taste in movies also. Other thoughts? A other cu couple of other quick suggestions. Go ahead. Second officer. Okay, anyone else? Going once. Sir, Nick, right over here. Terry? Uh, I think being able to incorporate like little breaks and things to refresh yourself throughout the day because I think there can be the pressure to just keep pushing, 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 but um, it can be more effective, more efficient if you have like little breaks. And yep, absolutely. And that is about leading yourself as well as modeling for other people. And unfortunately, how many of us have gotten caught up into if we take that little break, and now we're not talking a 45 minute break every hour, right? <laughs> but how many of us have started to think if we take that little break, we're wasting time, right? It's sort of like the people who have, I talk to some folks who have all four weeks of their vacation unused, and we're here in late September getting ready into early October, right? Do we need some sort of refresher every once in a while? Okay, and there's a lot of research going on about there about holistic approaches to leadership, about wellness programs, and you're going to see, Nick, something right up in some of the recommendations that came out. Okay, let me do this. And you might have heard keynote speaker and said, oh, good, I could sit back and sort of chill out for 30, 45 minutes. Uh, if you haven't noticed, you're not going to just sit back, chill out, and listen to me drone on and on because it's interesting. I was just downstairs. I needed five minutes of my own. So I went down to the second floor. I found this little table I was sitting at, and it's right by, what do you call it, the Chemistry Discovery Center? Yeah. Right? And I see these signs in front about the philosophy, 
And the philosophy is that you don't learn by listening, you learn by getting engaged. So I'm going to try for the remaining time we have is to continue it along this line with some information. And at this point, if I could ask the folks in the committee who have the, uh, the handouts, if those could start going out, because I also don't want to burden everybody with having to write everything down. Basically, everything that's up here on the slides are going to be included in this handout. You could take any and all additional notes, but you don't have to be taking all your time. We could focus on what we're talking about. So let me give you a little sense of where the rest of this presentation, some of the contents is coming from. Um, Valerie, you were kind enough to mention about the handbook, the book that we had put together. Um, Back in 2009, when there was tons of change starting, our firm did a survey of over 100 senior leaders across different sectors. We had private profit, for-profit sectors, nonprofit, <coughs> university, higher education, a little bit in the public sector. And we asked senior leaders, and we had a couple here from, from UMBC respond to it. We asked senior leaders, essentially, what recommendations do you have for frontline and mid-level leaders to be more effective leaders in times of significant change? What recommendations do these senior level individuals have for their front and mid-level leaders in order to be better leaders, more effective leaders, more productive leaders in times of significant change? What you're going to see, what we're going to talk about are some of the findings that came out of that. And one of the key things is that they applied not only to frontline and mid-level leaders, they actually in turn applied to senior most leaders, and they applied to just about all of us who may not be in formal supervisory positions, because again, I go back to your president's comment about we're all leaders. So what you're going to see in here, and think about how indeed this links to some of the things that you had just come up with. There were some core insights that came out. First of all, I was sort of mixed about this because I was sort of hoping I'd get this whole new model of leadership and I could publish this book that would sell a million copies and then I could take days off and go off to you know Aruba and Ireland and Italy and all of that. Well, guess what? The good news is the executives were not saying there's a need for a whole new set of leadership skills. They were saying, if anything, what we need to do is focus more on some of the core principles of leadership that we should be practicing all along and build off of those and that these recommendations are not simply for people in formal levels of leadership. And they turned out to be 10 key themes that came across. The, by the way, the survey, we didn't ask people to check off, here's a list of 50 items, check off which are the most important. We simply asked them, what advice do you have? And they wrote it, they typed it in. I will tell you the power in the words as opposed to just a checklist was amazing. And we found three core themes coming out, three key categories. Some of the themes that were coming out were saying, you know what, first and foremost, before you start worrying about leading other people, what do you need to do? Lead yourself, okay? Some people said it as bluntly as that, other people were a little bit more cautious about it. But the very firm thing came across, lead yourself. Then look at what influence and what leadership you have with who? With people around you. And then there was a third element, and we put it up here saying lead the business, lead the overall, whatever industry, whatever sector you're in, lead the business that you're involved with. And again, we'll talk more about that, but lead yourself first and foremost, then start looking at how you want to influence and lead other people, and then also look at some aspects of leading the business, particularly around things around efficiency, Val, that we're here for most of the day about. Okay? Some of the things that came up, what I'm going to do is highlight all 10 themes very briefly. And then we're going to tune into three or four of them that are relating even to some of the comments you've already made today. Fair enough? Okay. The 10 themes under lead yourself, there were these three themes. One of them said first and foremost, and this particularly went to formal leaders, but I think it applies to everyone. Acknowledge that when times are changing, when there's some uncertainty in the environment, the leadership practices, the leadership behaviors we all exhibit are take on even greater value, greater importance than when times are very smooth and simple. How many people would agree with that? This is a little bit of when the going gets tough, you know, the tough get going type of thing. It's more important. Think of yourself. Do you look for your leaders, to for your supervisors to be more effective, to be more present right now? Right? 
How many of people have ever worked in an organization where when it got tough, the leaders sort of escaped to their offices? Okay? Not here, I know, right? I'm talking about other organizations, right? Okay? You have a president, know, who bounces all around. I said something about that chemistry center, and he said, yeah, yeah, come on, Joe, let me show you. And I have a meeting. I want to show some other people later this afternoon. He comes out. He pulls his iPhone out. He walks into that room, and it's a bunch of freshmen in that room. And I saw two of them saying, is that president? <laughs> and he just walked around. He took a couple of pictures and said, hey, how you doing? Didn't grandstand. Does he walk around? Does he make himself more visible? Okay. Another one said, make sure if you're looking to lead yourself, you need to understand what's going on. Right? You need to educate yourself about what's going on in the environment. How many people would agree with that one? Right? Is this earth shaking, ground shaking information up here? I'll tell you, I had someone, and I'll tell you also, the book that we put in, this is it. This is it, everybody. It's like 44 pages or something like that. I was on XM Sirius Radio, book radio, with a guy who had sold a million copies of his book, a man, Patrick Lencioni. He wrote a book called The, Dysf the Five Dysfunctions of a Team. He's in California on the mic. I'm on in DC in their studios. And the host of the program, Patrick gets 15 minutes first. We cut to break. And she says, coming back from break, Joe Rea with Glimmer Glass Consulting, on and on. And he's going to talk about the work they've done about leadership in times of change. Right? I'm thinking, this is cool. I could get to pump my book because there's at least seven people in addition to my family listening to XM radio at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, right? Book radio, right? She turns to me. We come back. And I'm in the studio. Think about it. I'm in the studio. And she says, so Joe, I'm holding a copy of your, um, well, I'm holding a copy. You're the author of Leading in Times of Significant Change and Uncertainty. And she goes, you wrote this, but it's like it's not a real book. Now, I'm thinking, man, I'm glad my mother doesn't get serious XM radio now, <laughs> right? And she said, and, you know, but you wrote it differently. And why did you write this? And we said, you know, I turned around right away. I'm thinking, one, that's not the opening question I really expected. That was change. That was some pressure there. And what I did say after I studied a little bit was, you know what? We wrote it because we want to have people read it. How many people want to read a 250-page book today, right? So I wrote it in a way that highlights these recommendations and the themes. And the other thing is that when someone read it, one of my clients read it, and he said, you know what? I was waiting to hear all the groundbreaking information. And what I realized when I was done is that it wasn't all that groundbreaking. But what it did is made me think a half a dozen times about this and this and this. And it goes back to that initial thing, which was executives are not looking for brand new skills. They're saying we need, and in some <laughs> cases, just to go back to the basics but actually do them. So when I ask, does this make sense, most cases people are saying, yeah, it does make sense because it's connecting with what we've been doing all along. OK, the last one about leading yourself was manage yourself and manage your demeanor. That's one we're going to look at in more, in more detail. Have you seen people react well to stress, change, and uncertainty? How many of you have seen people react not so well? <laughs> How was that? Was that politically correct? OK. All right. Lead the people. Four things came up under that. Those were get people focused because people want to know what's expected of them, what they need to be working on. Communicate. This goes back to the listening piece very clearly. Engage staff members. Get your colleagues involved in things. Again, it's one of the reasons why when I'm doing this session, I'm asking people for input because most people don't want to sit there for hours and hours and be told simply what to do. They want to get engaged. And the last thing is something around performance management techniques, which says be clear about what's expected, give people more feedback, give them more recognition. In times of change, do people want more or less reinforcement? Right? They want to hear a little bit more. So you don't have to be a formal leader to turn to one of your colleagues and say, hey, Joel, thanks a lot for helping me out yesterday. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, you see? Bingo, that's it. How long did that take? Two, three seconds? Can that be done more? Can you all in this room do that with each other? OK? All right, and the last thing is leading the business, the one that we're going to focus on, numbers eight and, nine, 8 and 10. Look at creativity and innovation in everything you do. Look at, be careful about how you use resources, budgets, and all that. But then number 10 is identify opportunities for future success. Don't just figure out how to survive today. Figure out how we're going to survive and flourish in the future. OK? So do these 10 make sense to you in the room? 
How many of you could apply any of these? Do me a favor, take 30 seconds, everyone, and we have these cool colored pens right in front of you. Look at the slides that have those 10. Put a circle or a check or whatever you want next to three or four of them that really jump out to you as these are most relevant to me being more effective in leading myself and leading other people. Which of these 10 jump out to you more rather than some of the other ones? All right, curiosity, just yell them out. Which ones did you mark down? Anyone? Don't, don't need for a mic, what? Communicate. communicate, how many people had communicate as one of the ones? All right, because you know what? Whether you're in a formal or an informal leadership role, do we all communicate with fellow human beings? Right, okay, other items. Which are the other ones, sure? Um, embrace the increased importance of your leadership role. Embrace the increased importance of your leadership role. Again, whether you're in a formal or informal. Anyone else? Someone else, in the back, towards the back. Sir? Get people focused. Get people focused. People want to know, particularly when things are uncertain, what's most important, what's least important. Now, we're going to look at two or three of these in the short time we have remaining. We're gonna look at the first one. Manage yourself and manage your demeanor. How many people had that one checked off? Right, look at this, almost everybody. And this is what the committee had said. They said, Joe, these are the ones that we'd be interested in. So committee, thank you very much, all of you who had joined in that conference call there, okay? Um, I wanna show a quick example you tell me whether this individual, or both of them, are managing their demeanor in this time of a little bit of stress. Okay? And pay attention to the music in the background. This is pretty cool. that demeanor so far. I don't know what happened. Hmm? All right. Did that, those two women manage their demeanor well? Okay. I saw the two police officers in the back saying, I hope you, I hope you guys have not seen that here, right? <laughs> not yet. Not, no, no, let's not go there. That's not optimism. That's, remember, they talk about positive? 
Okay, now, a little humor in there, but can you sometimes lose yourself? Okay, and let's be honest, let's not beat ourselves up if you blow up every once in a while. If you do it every day and you just say, oh, I got caught up, then we have a different issue. Is it important to manage yourself and manage your demeanor? Yeah. Does your impact, does your demeanor have impact on other people? Yeah. Without question. I don't care whether you're the president of the, the university or whether you're a new hire, whether you've been here forever, whatever role you're in, our demeanor has an impact on other people and the effectiveness of the organization. This was a quote from an individual. Our employees take us, the work, the organization, home with them every night. They take the moods and the attitude they see. And guess what? They talk about it. It's crucial that our leaders and all of us stay calm and positive in these times. They have a huge impact on how our employees see things. What do you think? How many of you take what you see and experience here home at night? Right? How many of you talk about it? Okay. Do you talk positively? Right? And do any of you talk negatively about negative things that have happened? Okay, so think about this. Some of the recommendations that the senior leaders were talking about is, guess what? Lead by example, be a role model. Do not preach something and then do the opposite. If you're not going to do it, don't talk about it. Okay? Stay calm, don't overreact. Please do not start doing, you know, the door slamming in the parking lots and parking garages and whatnot. Someone had talked earlier at that table about being positive, <coughs> right, towards that far end of the room. What about this? Demonstrate a sincere care and concern for your fellow workers. How many of you have experienced your coworkers expressing concern and care about you? I don't want to sound touchy-feely. How's it feel? Feels pretty cool, huh? Are you more or less dedicated to that group than if you believe people care about you? And I'm not saying that you have to invite them over for Thanksgiving dinner and you have to be best friends and then sharing in you know, kids' weddings and all that stuff, but a little bit of care and concern goes an awful, awful long way. And the other thing is when you were talking, it was Nick, you were talking about the take a break every once in a while. It was interesting, we got this comment from some folks who are really rough, roll up your sleeves, tumble type of guys. One person used to head up the uh, EMS, the emergency medical group in the Bronx. He said, you know what? People got to take a breath every once in a while. They have to relax every once in a while. They have to exercise every once in a while. They better get some sleep. Because there's tons of research out there saying what? The more tired we are, what? The more or less effective? What happens to this stuff about your demeanor when you're constantly feeling tired? OK? So again, I would relate that to some of the things your president also said. All right? A couple of other things. Communication. I know one of the officers in the back talked about listening. Communicate. As a business evolves during changing time, a premium is going to be placed on communication, open and candid communication. This does not mean talking a lot. This means listening a lot. It means being open with people. It means asking questions, listening to responses, being open and honest and candid and sharing information with people. Some of the recommendations that came out, communicate very often. Don't just do it once. Do not think that simply because you are sending an email to someone that the message has gotten through. How many emails does anyone get in one day? <laughs> four or five, right? That's all, right? <laughs> and around the last four minutes, you've gotten four or five. Okay? Communicate effectively. Be honest. Share as much information as you possibly can. That means, though, there are times when you may not be able to share everything you know. Has anyone ever been in a position when you have confidential information that is not yet for public disclosure. Show of hands. Okay? So what do you do then if someone asks you about that information? Huh? You say what? Yeah, you do a sort of a polite no comment. Say, look, you know what? I may have some, you know, you could even say, I have some information about that. At this point, I'm not free to share it. Okay? Don't tell them you don't know. Why? If they ask you about something you know, but you're not allowed to share it. Why do we say, don't say, I don't know? <laughs> yeah, it's a lying thing. It's a what? It's an honesty. It's an integrity thing. Tell them, even though they may not be real happy, and please do not succumb to this. Ah, oh, it's OK. You could tell me. I won't tell anybody else. <laughs> OK? 
All right, other things around communication, ask, listen. The rumor mill, I know there are no rumor mills here at UMBC, correct? Guess what? Could you, regardless of what job you're in, what role you're in, could you help stop the rumor mill? How do you do that? Don't participate. So if someone comes in and says, hey, you know what? Let me tell you what I heard about so-and-so yesterday. What do you say? No. Say, no thanks. Yeah, I'm not interested right now. Appreciate it, but you know what? It doesn't have a play right here, right now. Okay, and this element here, the senior leaders were very clear. Communicate upward to us. Let your managers know what's going on, because in many cases, you're all in positions where one or two or three levels above may not be hearing what you're able to hear. Okay, and the last area I want to make sure we cover is creativity and innovation. This quote, I expect my leaders and teams to be clever to think of new ideas. I like this second part. When things are going well, it's easy to stick with what's always worked. It is imperative now to try new things and to be what? <coughs> Innovative. We're going to have sessions around optimizing work, making work a little bit easier and more productive. One of the things you'll hear is an awful lot about that piece right in there. Be more flexible, reinforce creativity, and look for some improvements. Okay? And then finally, I'm going to wrap up with this and ask you to do a little bit of work now. There are several quotes in there around looking for opportunities for future success, okay? I'm not gonna read all of them. I like this one though. This is a great opportunity for us to get some new and better habits that we can use in future times. There are a couple of other quotes up there. I will tell you, this was a perfect example. I was talking to a gentleman who headed up a family-run business. I won't tell you what industry it was. And he said, in these crazy times, he said, we're hurting financially, like many, many other organizations. He said, but I will tell you, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my father run it all through crazy times of their own. The Great Depression, a recession back in the 80s. And he said, and I will be donned, and he didn't say donned, okay? He said, I'll be donned if I'm not going to live up to my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my father's expectations to run this business. And he said, so you know what? We had a lot of family discussions. He said, we went out, we got a little bit more of a line of credit. He said, there's tons of great people out there right now. He said, we were able to hire three or four people who got laid off from one of our major competitors, and these were top-notch people. And he said, not only were they laid off, but the competitor went out of business. He said, we're bleeding some red ink, but I hired three or four top-notch people. Why? What was he thinking? Short-term or long-term? Long Absolutely long-term. He says, and we had some real serious discussions at the dinner table and at the board table. And he said, but we did that because I really believed we had to take advantage of certain aspects that we would not have. Is that person looking for future success? Okay, is that person showing some leadership? So, what I invite everybody to do at this point, can you open up your, um, you have a blue sheet in your program guide. And it simply asks you to jot down some thoughts, some key insights, and what actions you may take. And you will see this in each one of the sessions throughout the rest of the, day, of the day. We're asking you to do it at, during and at the end of each session as opposed to at the end of the day, because at the end of the day, you'll have been through this and four other sessions. So please, take a minute or two, jot down what are some of the key insights that you've gained from this session, and what are one or two thoughts, actions that you have that could help you be a better leader of yourself and others in times of significant change. Okay, and as you're wrapping this up, I would urge you, particularly at the end of each one of the sessions, keep this in mind. You're looking, as a result of this day, this investment in your time, to be walking out with some things that you could apply back at your specific workplace. So please, keep in mind these blue sheets that you've just filled out now, one or two actions that you might want to take, and any of the action planning sheets that you'll complete at the end of the other sessions. Are these times a significant change for all of us? Can they be good, positive, productive times? Okay, think about Dr. Rabowski's comments about positive, about attitude, about neotony, about looking at things very differently and with fresh eyes and lots of energy. Okay, so with that, I wanna thank you. I wanna thank you all for getting here safely. 
for coming in for this session. I commend all of you for putting the investment in. And again, on the way out, on your way home, please be very, very safe out there. Again, thank you. I love coming here, and I'll be seeing several of you as we during throughout the day as I'm doing some of the other sessions. Thank you very much. And Terry, I know that you want to bring us into some other things. <laughs>